Hi there, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Ed Draws. So if you're new here, and I know I've, I've noticed a, a, I get a new subscriber about every day now, which is big for me. <laughs> I've been doing this for a few years, and the growth on my channel is just, it's really, really slow. So um, no complaints there. It's just the way that it is. But with the new subscribers, I don't really know why you're here specifically, because I'm all over the map as an artist. So this title is for traditional art. So if you're here for that, look for that title in my videos. And if you're here for the, the newer stuff that I'm doing, the generative art, then look for this title in the videos. And this is going to be a Mr. Ed Code's screen art video and not a Mr. Ed draw. So I'm sorry if you're here for that, but if uh, you do want to see something neat, stay tuned because this is really cool. I'm going to be talking about visualizing Perlin noise. So you see here is just some waves. These waves are being generated with random numbers that are created with a system called Perlin noise. It was invented in the 80s, I think it was, and it's been used in all kinds of things since then. It's just like a foundation of graphics now. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to Wikipedia and learn about it. Here's what the the reference is Perlin noise, and you can see some of the patterns that are generated. The, the mountains, the real looking mountains, fake, generated with these algorithms. So uh, one of the things that you can do is you can create a flow field using these random numbers because they're they're related to one another. It kind of looks like, like waves or, or diffusion of stuff. And this here looks like weather patterns, you know, like a weather map would show you the direction of the wind. So based on that kind of build, I'm going to adjust those little things moving around in different ways so I can create visualization. And this is going to be the generative art part of what I do with coding because principally what I'm after is generating art. I'm not trying to be a master computer programmer. I, I code enough to kind of accomplish what I'm after and that's about it. <laughs> it's it's basic. But with with basic understanding, you can play around a lot and you can go into places in coding that no one has ever been before because there really is a lot of variability to how you visualize these things. So this is one of my favorite outcomes that I was able to create using the Perlin noise as a visualization. I, I just love how it looks. It's like uh, kelp, alien kelp, or a field of plants. Kind of reminds me of the Midwest and wind blowing over a cornfield. You know, it's got that kind of organic fluid-like movement. Even though they're random numbers, they're all related to one another, so you can, you can get this movement that passes through it. So if you haven't yet, and you like what you see here, hit subscribe, hit the bell, give me a like, uh, comment if you have any questions, and share with your friends. So here's another way of visualizing that. So instead of the the line spinning, I have an ellipse here and the ellipse color is based on it spinning and I just go with that with other geometries here and and have the the noise as it moves through this the layers of noise as we call it. Uh, I change the geometry's size, I change their colors and I change their rotation and it's all relational to this noise. So it creates these really, really cool patterns of things moving across the screen. Um, I just played around with that a lot, messing with the colors. The The way that the color moves, the color cycling is also um, Perlin noise. You can cycle through with just like sine waves, or you can cycle through the colors with uh, linear interpolation or just random numbers. Uh, the random number is just going to look like a crayon box is having a seizure. So you really want it to kind of go from one color to another and kind of pass through these gradients. And that, to me, seems like it creates the best effect. So in addition to changing the geometries of these different spots and the rotations, I can drop particles in there. I can drop little pieces of stuff in there and then have them react to their surroundings. So if I, I drop a, a dot in the center of the screen and where whatever the state is of the one it's closest to, it's going to react to that. And you can get those particles to actually flow around the screen. I had um, a visualization yesterday yesterday that looked kind of like the surface of the sun. It was, it was really cool. You can see it's kind of like that there, but you just have to add a lot more particles. In P5JS, 
there are limitations to the speed when you start adding things like that. So I'm once I get this language down, I'm going to be learning processing, which lets me use a lot more elements, a lot more particles, and you can get more density and more uh, fidelity and definition out of your visualizations. Right now, it's just kind of boxy and and cartoonish. I feel like, but it's still it's still really awesome. I mean, I love looking at this visualization. It's one of my favorites, and I have it uh, in kind of a screensaver setting, so I can just load it on my computer and set it in the background and enjoy it that way. And that's kind of the next level of art. Can you imagine just having, instead of a canvas, you have a TV screen with the visualization running in your hallway. <laughs> that's kind of cool, I think. So if you like this video, again, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Let me know why you're watching these videos. If you like the traditional art, if you uh, like both or neither. <laughs> and as always, until next time, you guys, take care.